Hello, wonderful. <coughs> Hello, wonderful family. Great to be with you again. I trust you've had, if you just woke up from sleep, a pleasant and restful sleep. If you've, your day has already ensued, that you've been having a blast of a day in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> Today is Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, most, in most of the world, when I say unfortunately, in most of the world, we're still um, locked down physically constrained but we're not spiritually bound we are liberated we have the opportunity to bless god at home uh, thank god for the internet where we could reach one another and fellowship with one another and for those of us who have who, who have um, family at home we have the opportunity to have fellowship amongst our family at home blessed be god today i want to talk about something that is very very uh, pertinent with respect to faith it occurred to me that um, we keep talking of faith but there's something cardinal that makes faith work yes the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god yes that's true but if you have faith there, there are things that could uh, there, there's an igniter that makes faith work and that, that's love and we want to talk about that now so that your faith always works praise god um i'll read from a couple of scriptures it might be lengthy i just made a little note so that i can keep to time we'll, we'll read from galatians chapter 5 from verse uh, galatians chapter 5 verse verses 5 to 6 um first john chapter 4 verses 7 to 21 the book of john chapter 13 uh, from verses 34 to 35 and 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 8 and I will explain us as we go ahead let's dive in for Galatians chapter 5 verse 5 for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything non circumcision but faith which worketh by love praise God that's Faith which worked by love could actually be said faith which is energized or activated by love. Uh, uh, Amplify says, but only faith activated and energized, activated and energized and expressed and walking through love. So love is what gives it. Uh, enables it to be expressed love enables it to work if if there's no love faith doesn't produce you could have all the faith available i'll show you that later on first corinthians uh, chapter 13 you you need to be walking in love for your faith to work um let's go to first john chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21 it's enumerated day clearly the bible says beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god verse 8 very key he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love ever wondered why god's when when god speaks things happen the bible says faith is expressed activated energized and walks through love and god is love that's basically why his faith works. Love cannot lie. You see later on, love cannot lie. Love, love, love. Um, it's wonderful. Let's go. There are many scriptures trying to explode now in, in, inside of me, and I want to keep to uh, what I've written in, for, in terms of time. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, love takes the first step. Love takes the first step. Praise God. God initiated because he loved. Praise God. Love, if we love, we will be the initiators of things. We would take the first step. We will not take account of a suffered wrong instead we'll rather 
extend the bridge of fellowship extend the, uh, the, the bridge to to let the other one that offended us climb back in into fellowship with us praise god Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. That is a challenge. If God loved us, He is enjoining us that we ought to love one another the same way. Hallelujah. No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and His love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. Hear it again. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear, because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? This is very pertinent. If you say you love God, you would love your brother. But if you if you hate your brother or your sister or your auntie your mother your brother-in-law the bible calls you a murderer praise god the bible calls you a liar further down it also calls you a murderer you can't say you love god and hate somebody else in essence he's saying check yourself that that and adjust yourself because you are stepping out of fellowship with God. You step you you can you're not you're not walking in love towards God because God created that man, you know. He's for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Praise God. We're enjoined to love. If you can't love your fellow man, forget it. How how do you say you love God that you can't see? The Bible said it, not Harold. And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Notice it's a commandment, it's not a suggestion. It says that he who loveth God love his brother also. Praise God. Quickly to jump to John chapter 13 from verse 34. This was Jesus speaking now. A new commandment I give unto you. Remember verse 21 of 1 John 4, chapter 4 says. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Verse 34 of John 13. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. It is crystal clear. You want to walk in God, you obey that commandment to love one another. The Bible says all the other commandments are summed up in this, the commandment of love. Praise God. Now, down to the main meat of the matter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 1 to 8. If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, that is, extort, extorting his qualities, his qualities, Trying to trying to say, look, I am I'm this, I'm that. If I can do this, or I can do that, but I have not love. I am also a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understanding all the secret truths and mysteries, and possess all knowledge, and I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I'm nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned up in order that I may glory, but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. He's just telling you that without love, everything else is just a nullity. Then he goes ahead now from verse 4 to, this, to, to define what this love is. Verse 4. Take a dive with me. Love endures long and is patient and kind glory to God do you 
endure long. When he says endurance of long, that is something is irking you, putting pressure on you, or somebody is putting pressure on you, and you endure it. He says it endures long. It's not short fused. It's patient and kind. Are you patient and kind? Those are qualities of love. Check yourself. This is this is the love meter. Do you endure long? Are you patient and kind? Are you, you, you know you could be patient but unkind whilst being patient. Unkind words just slip out of your mouth all the time. You say you're, you're a Christian but very coarse, unkind words slip out of your mouth. That, your faith cannot work. Remember it says uh, uh, faith is energized, activated, empowered by love. Praise God. Love is never envious nor boils over with jealousy. Are you checking that love barometer? Are you envious or do you boil over with jealousy? Love is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. I'm, I'm this big man of God, so you are under me. And so. No, your faith cannot work. You might be going based on past glory. You are impeding yourself. You are impeding yourself. The Bible says, It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not be act unbecomingly. Check yourself. Are you rude? Are your manners some nothing to write home about? Do you act unbecomingly? That is not love. Praise God. He says love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. This is my right. I will do it this way. I, I won't budge. It's my right. No. Love gives room. Because it endures long, is patient and kind. Love, it says, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Wow. That seems like a tall order. That you don't pay attention to a suffered wrong. You don't take account of evil done to you. That seems like a tall order. But you know, this love that God is requiring of you, the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. So if God shed this love in your heart, it is possible for you to do it. He won't, he won't tell you to do something that is impossible for you to do or that he has not empowered you to carry out. If he does that, he is unjust. He's, meanwhile, he's a just God. So he's telling you that all these qualities, you, you have the ability to carry them out for your faith to work. He says... Pays no account to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It, you see, it is not making excuses. Anything and everything love can cope with. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person. It is not a disbeliever. You see, it believes the best, not the worst. So at times people ask me, say, Harry, why do you believe this? I say, I have to, if I want my faith to work, why do you believe this person? Give the person a chance. I want my faith to work. That's why I believe the person. You can be telling me, Phoebes, uh, as long as you, you, you I, I ask you for something, I ask you about something, and you tell me, my, the, the onus is on me to believe you. I want my faith to work because if i start off disbelieving you and the next thing is i end up having a hard time believing god praise god it's ever ready to believe the best of every person its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening praise god the clincher on the other side of the board now love never fails did you hear that God is love. God cannot fail. Love never fails. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. 
As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and seized. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Love never fails. Is your faith seeming as if it is not getting the results that you, you set out to get? Check your love barometer. Go back and check these things out. In fact, if you want it activated in your, in your life, the same way that you make confessions concerning what God has said, says, by his stripes I was healed. You come and confess that this is, this, these qualities are, are in me. It, is, it, it would astound you how you would make, the amount of progress you would make in life. You come, you personalize it. You say, from, you start off, I like, give a typical example from verse 4. Love in me endures long. That is, my love endures long. I endure long. I'm patient. I am kind. I'm never envious, nor do I boil over with jealousy. I'm not boastful or vainglorious. I do not display myself haughtily. I am not conceited. I am not arrogant and inflated with pride. I am not rude or mannerly, and, and I do not act unbecomingly. I do not insist on my own rights or on my own way, for I am not self-seeking. I am not touchy or fretful or resentful. I take no account of the evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I do not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but I rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. I am ever ready to believe the best of every person. My hopes are faithless under all circumstances and I endure everything without weakening. I never fail. I never fade out. I never become obsolete or come to an end. Praise God. If you, if you, if you keep on confessing this, that is you personalize it this way, you would be amazed at the leaps and bounds you would make in terms of love. God bless you.